Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna review some of the best versus the worst hypertrophy programs. We're gonna look at some example programs and then we'll refer to the evidence to actually figure out which evidence-based training techniques are most effective for improving muscle hypertrophy and how we can actually evaluate a program to figure out if it's using evidence-based training principles or not. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So to start off, let's talk about some example programs that are probably not the best training techniques. As an example, here's one program that's kind of all over the place and primarily just includes accessory movements. When you're evaluating a resistance training program, if you see that there's eight or nine accessory movements and only one compound movement, that should be a red flag that this is probably not gonna be a very effective hypertrophy program. This is really only one training session, so you also do wanna look for progression from week to week if you are seeing multiple weeks. And what you'll see with a lot of programs like this is that they're just randomly working through different accessory movements and trying to give a lot of movement variety, which is not a really good evidence-based training technique. This article is a pretty good example showing us that cycling through a bunch of different accessory movements does not improve hypertrophy over consistently staying with some of the same main exercises for an entire block of training. What you'll see when we get to the better program examples towards the end is that there's consistent focus on compound movements first and a few accessories and we're sticking with those compound movements often for four, six, or seven weeks at a time before we switch them up. This would allow us to progressively overload those compound movements and only use accessories as accessories, not the majority of the program. Moving on to a better example but still not a great program would be something like this that I came across on Google. Some critiques that I have of this program is that we're only training legs once a week. It's probably not gonna be very effective for muscle hypertrophy. We know that training frequency probably needs to be closer to two to three times a week unless we're really intense with that one day a week of training. If you're only hitting three exercises of legs as half of one session per week, you're probably not gonna see any meaningful hypertrophy unless you're a very beginner and just getting into training. If you're training three times a week, it's probably not gonna be optimal to do a body part split. You're probably better off doing full body training or something like one full body day with a push and a pull day or something like an upper body, a lower body and one full body training day. This would at least allow us to hit each major muscle group twice a week, which is probably the minimum that we're gonna need here for achieving good muscle hypertrophy. Otherwise, you're just really not getting enough volume. One other thing that I would change about this program based on the evidence is this very short one minute rest period. While there is a recommendation to use 60 to 90 seconds of rest for hypertrophy training, I think if you have the time, especially in a program like this, when you're only doing about five exercises, you can probably extend that rest period to around three minutes and get better gains. If you think about it, this training session would only last about 15 to 20 minutes total, and you'd probably get more benefit from resting a little bit longer and making those sets more intense if you're only doing this volume of training or you could modify by keeping that rest about 60 to 90 seconds and just adding more volume to this program. Before we get to the good program examples, I wanna cover a few more training mistakes, one of those being taking every set to failure. This study just came out fairly recently and it had well-trained men with an average bench press of around 290 pounds doing one of two different protocols. Either they did five sets all taken to failure or they did four sets short of failure with one to three repetitions left in the tank and then only the last set to failure. Measures of creatine kinase, which are an indicator of fatigue, were 33% higher in the group that trained all sets to failure 48 hours later, indicating that they were probably gonna take closer to 72 hours to recover and they probably wouldn't be able to hit that next session with as much intensity. I'm not against training to failure. I think you should take most of your accessory movements close to failure and maybe even one set of your compound lifts to failure, especially towards the end of a program when you're pushing for more of that fatigue. But we probably don't wanna see all sets taken to failure and we probably don't wanna take that many sets to failure early in a program when we're just getting used to the movements. So what you'll see in the more advanced programming is maybe one or two plus sets or sets taken to failure towards week three or four when we're approaching the end of a programming block. With that said, now let's look at some of the best hypertrophy programs from people who are doing this at a very high level and see what they're doing. The first example comes from the folks over at Mass. This is a paid research review that you have to sign up for. It's one that I use to actually find the research articles for this video and stay on top of the evidence. I won't show you the whole thing, but I'll give you a little sample of a program that they wrote for an elite bodybuilder. What you can probably tell off the bat is that this is a lot of training volume. That said, this is built for an elite bodybuilder. 
So someone who is accommodated to training at high volumes and can recover from this. You can see though that they're doing a combination of solid compound movements, tracking RPE to monitor intensity and make sure that we're progressing week to week and also tracking the weight that's being used week to week to actually ensure progress long term. A more basic templated example from Greg Knuckles by Stronger by Science is the program that I'm actually about to follow. For those of you who don't know, I do triathlon training and I just completed my early season races. While it was nice to be back on the podium, even if it was just an age group finish, I am excited to get back and do some hypertrophy training and hitting the gym a little bit harder. This is a program that I purchased for, I believe, less than $50 months ago, so I will only show you a little bit, but I do want to focus on some things that make this program high quality and take advantage of the evidence. Worked into this template is the ability to choose your own accessory movements based on your specific goals. So if you have a preference for specific accessory movements, you can plug those into the template and make this a bit more individualized. This program also has auto regulation built in. So when you input how many sets you did with a certain weight, then next week recalculates your load based on what you did the previous training week. As if that's not enough, you can also use a two rep max early in your workout to dictate your individual training session intensity based on how you're feeling that day. So what I'm saying is this is a fairly advanced program and it's probably going to help you make progress faster than just following a generic program of random exercises from your favorite influencer. Some overall things that you want to look for in a good hypertrophy program is one progressive overload. So some way to actually make progression from week to week. In the most simple form, this could just mean that you're using a weight that you can only do for eight reps and you're building up until you can do that for 10 reps, for 12 reps, and then you're increasing the weight so that way you can only use it for eight reps again and you just keep that trend going. In terms of training volume, this can be highly individual from one person to the next. When we look at the meta-analyses like these, we can see that we probably want to have at least 10 sets per week per muscle group. That said, this is a baseline across many studies with a lot of untrained individuals. If you're more well trained and you've accommodated to a higher volume of training, you may need drastically more than this, like 15 or 20 sets per week per muscle group of intense compound movements to see a beneficial effect. It's safe to say though, if we're seeing a program with three sets per week, we're probably underdosing for most people. If you're interested in learning more about how to write a strength and conditioning program, then you should check out my course Program Design 101. This is a course designed to teach you exactly how to write great strength and conditioning programs. Throughout the course, you'll learn exactly how to write a strength program, power and plyometric program, endurance program, and hypertrophy program with a concise review of the literature as well as examples. This is a really great way to get started writing your first strength and conditioning program. By using my program templates and my examples and having me guide you step by step through writing it, it can be a lot less overwhelming than trying to write a strength and conditioning program from scratch. I will put a link in the description below to my free five step guide to writing a strength conditioning program, as well as a link to learn more about program design 101. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you learned a lot and I will catch you in the next one.